Welcome back, guys. It's finally gonna happen. I've had the parts forever, and now I have a weekend where it's not gonna rain, even though it's gonna be really freaking hot here in North Carolina. I am finally going to do the four pot, two pot install on the Forester. Do it. So here they are just chilling in my house for the last ever. I got, I think, all of this on Amazon. So of course I'll link it below. But you can see I've got my four pots here, my two pots here that are gonna replace everything. I've got new stainless steel brake lines that I'm gonna be putting in. And of course, I've got the torque solutions for the rear ones so they actually fit because those are the only ones that don't fit perfectly. And of course, right here, I've got the new brake pads and brake rotors, which I'm gonna have to do a little bit of uh, moving around to get to fit, but it will work. And as you know, I'm trying to go for the stock sleeper look with this. So this is the before. We're gonna try to keep the exact same wheels and tires and pop these bad boys on there so I get some super stopping power. Of course, first things first, jack up the car, take off the tire to get your brakes. I'm gonna start with the front brakes because they're easier. No adapters are needed up here. We can just pop in the new stuff as needed. So first thing we gotta do is we gotta take the old caliper off of here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the two nuts here and then the two nuts that actually hold the caliper bracket on. So first things first, I'm gonna take these off and both of these bolts are gonna be 14. This one right up here and this one right down here. Now that the caliper can come off, it's gonna be attached obviously by your brake line. So we're gonna put this off to the side. Now technically I am replacing this, but it's just habit to put this off to the side and not put any strain on this line. So I'm gonna pop this over here so there's no strain on the line and then get this bracket and of course pop these pads out. Now that I have sitting it up there, just barely because I don't have any bungee cords. Next, we need to get this bracket off. In order to do that, we've got a 17 millimeter bolt and that is gonna be the two back here. So you're gonna have one back there and you're also gonna have one up here. This one is pretty difficult to get to. Make sure you don't strip this one because you've got this bolt in the way right here. So when putting that in, try to do the best you can to get that on straight before you use your impact wrench or whatever wrench that you use because that can get stripped very easily. Once you get that 17 millimeter bolt off, I use kind of a short 17 mil to get on there and then an extension onto that and then my breaker bar just to be able to get that out with this big old nut in the way. Then, of course, your bracket falls off. So I'm gonna take that, put it off to the side. Now what we need to do is we need to get the rotor off because I'm also going to replace the rotors. And in order to get these rotors off, the easiest, best method to do, because I am not about to sit here for three hours and smack away at these with a hammer, is to get M8 by 1.25 screws. Uh, the ones that I did have, sadly, were the, not Phillips head, but they're whatever they're called. I've got my impact wrench right here with this big old fat tip that fits in there perfectly for what I have. Um, I use this uh, with my Honda because they have these and they're impossible to get off. But I just reversed it so it goes in instead of out. Smacked it with a hammer and it slowly tightens these up. I go back and forth and sooner or later, boop, it just pops loose. All right, so now that the caliper is off, the rotor is off, everything is off here, I've also got the brake lines. So for the brake lines, I am going to take off this screw this bolt that goes right in here, that's a 12 millimeter. That's just a little bracket that holds this line in place. And then right up here, we also do have to take, this is a little metal retaining clip that we have to take out. So we need to get something under here and pull it out. It's a little clamp that goes in. So the first thing I'm gonna deal with is this one right here. Once I get that one out, then I will deal with getting this unattached. Okay, so I just got this out. It's actually kind of a pain in the butt so you've got it slipped up in here and then you've got these two little arms out here. I have them bent out, but those are hooked around the inside. So I bent these out, got a pair of pliers and grabbed the bottom part and then pulled out of here. See, that's where it was supposed to be just like that. 
So these little things on the side, they're like little hooks. You gotta bend those out or do something to get them out of the way and something under here to pry it out. And here comes the most annoying part of it all. So now that we have that out, we can easily get to this right here. This is a 10 millimeter fuel line. So it's not gonna wanna play and you're gonna need a special one of these guys. This is a 10 millimeter and it's flared. So it goes all the way around, almost all the way around to give you better coverage so you don't strip this. Cause if you strip that, you screwed. So I've got one of these, I'm gonna pop this on here and then I'm also going to get something to hold on to this other metal bit so that doesn't spin. And then I can replace this whole hose line with happiness. Um, let's see how many hours this takes. Okay, strangely enough, that didn't take any time at all. So as you can see, just started to leak. I'll go ahead and tighten that back up a little bit, but that's a good sign. That means I popped that loose. I didn't strip anything out. It just, it cracked. So now that I have that one cracked loose, I don't want to take it off just yet. Um, I am going to get everything flushed. This is a must. You have to flush your brake fluid when you do this with the brakes. It's a half, you just, you just have to, it's a must. So. I'm actually gonna take it to a shop to do that. It's just my opinion. Shops do it much better with the machines that they have. They can pump it through, they can cycle it, they can get out every little air bubble. It's just better in my opinion. So I'm gonna end up doing that, but I need to get the vehicle there. So I am going to bleed the brakes when I get to that point, just so I can drive the vehicle safely to get that done. So right here on top of your caliper is your banjo bolt. You get your brake fluid that comes through here. It goes through the bolt. The bolt's actually hollow. You can see that, and it's got a little hole. That's why they call it a banjo bolt. So that bolt takes all the fluid, holds this in place, and it also uses it as a little straw, basically. I've got my new stainless steel lines right here. Of course, everything I do in this video, I'll link down below, but it's basically the same. So this is the other end. So that is going to fit straight through there and then going to attach that. I've even got new clips. I've got some new clips in here so I don't need to reuse the old ones. I've got new banjo bolts and most importantly, you've got these copper washers. You need to have these replaced so you have a good seal. And before we get the brake lines off, we're going to mock everything up just to make it even quicker. So you can see I've got my stainless steel line already hooked up. I've got the banjo bolt in there. I just realized I forgot the most important things, the copper washers. So don't forget those. So I've just got it mocked up right now. I've got it put into place. And when you put these on, a good way to figure out if you have it on the right side is of course, the holes right there are supposed to go into the holes right here. So that's one. However, right here, this is your bleeder valve. This needs to always be facing up because bubbles will rise. So when you bleed it, it gets all the bubbles out. So bleeder up on top, this big old nasty, just sexy thing is gonna be positioned just like this. I've got, I've got, see how this has like a little turn in the stainless steel line? I tried it both ways. I feel like this one's a lot easier when it turns up and out this way. And that's just how I have it. It doesn't really matter. It's a stainless steel line. So I'm gonna put it on like that. Of course, make sure I get my copper washers on both sides so they crush into place and steal, steal it real nice, seal it up. And then I'm gonna attach that guy right up here. Okay, filming all throughout the way with one hand and just one person. So just took that off, unplugged it. You can see I'm plugging it with my thumb. It's actually a little bit longer than you might think. So I got that plugged with my thumb, so I'm not losing any more than I need to be. So I've got that taken out. I've got this whole thing taken off to the side. I showed you how to take that banjo bolt off just in case you're not replacing the line. Some people like to keep the factory original ones. Maybe you're replacing them, maybe you're not. But I am replacing mine, so I'm gonna take these out. I've got this with the copper washers this time. And I've got the end right over there. I'm gonna slip that through the hole in here and then tighten it up. So this is what it's gonna look like once you got everything together. As you can see, it's still loosey-goosey over here. I don't have it clipped into place, but that's how I got into place. Of course, put this guy in through here first. It's not gonna fit all the way through, but get that through there. This guy, move that bolt up along that line, and of course, just thread it in. But a little piece of advice, brake fluid will eat 
paint, so do not get it on your paint anywhere is bad. And after a grueling three hours, you can finally get the stupid clip on, even though it's upside down, because that's the only way you could possibly get it to fit. Thanks, guys at Stop Tech. Next up, we're going to move on to cleaning the surface here, because I don't want my new rotors to stick, so I'm going to get a wire brush. I'm going to go around. I'm going to clean this up, maybe dab on a little bit of anti-seize on here, just so it doesn't stick in the future and it's not a pain in the butt totally optional but i'm going to clean this up real quick and i'm going to put the new gorgeous rotors on and look at those gorgeous new things so i have got the rotors on of course i'm going to give them a nice spray of brake cleaner it uh, gets rid of all my fingerprints and all the dust and crap that's on there from factory so i can clean the whole surface and make it absolutely gorgeous before i get my new calipers mounted on all right, I got them test fitted and they look fantastic. So I've got the hubs on here and then right back here, that's how I've got them on. I've got the bolt put through and then this part is threaded. You don't actually need um, this anymore because this is basically built into the new four pots that you're putting on here. So it's not two pieces, it's just a single piece. You put it on there, it bolts it on and then you get clamping force on both sides. So I do have the pads, but something I just figured out, because my luck is amazing, I've got the pads in there, but it didn't come with any of the retaining clips or the stuff that's supposed to go in here to hold those in place. So now I have to order that. So it's gonna be a while before I get those. So I might as well get my new brake line and smudge it on over here. This just bolts in right up here. And uh, yeah, it's gonna look pretty. I'm gonna clean it up. I'm gonna get those installed and then I'm gonna do it on the other side. All right, so I had to go and pick these up because these didn't come with the kit. These are both the front and the rear brake hardware. This is all of the stuff that goes into the caliper that didn't come with it when I bought it. All right, so I've got my new brake pads. So you can see this is what they're gonna look like. I'm just gonna slide them in here. I'm just gonna show you that. But before I actually do slide them in there, I'm gonna put some, uh, read it this way, some brake parts lubricant. That's just gonna be put on the rear side and also on the far sides over here. Anything that's rubbing against each other, I'm gonna put that stuff on there just so it doesn't make any squeaks or anything. And then I gotta figure out how the hell this thing goes on. I'm pretty sure this is like a spring. It comes down just like this and I put the pins through this way but um, I tried and it's hard. And once you get everything in place and you get the pins through on the inside, as you can see, I've got them on both sides. I had to do it both ways because it was such a tight fit to get those in. You need to put the little cotter pins in place to keep these from moving, which I doubt these will ever move ever again. So I got the hole right there. So all I have to do is take the cotter pin and push it through here and lock it into place. So now it's never gonna move. All right, just a quick little note to self. They need to be going in at the same way. So the flat ends are on the outside because where this cotter pin is supposed to go, like I have on this one, it would be sticking out too far on one side if I tried to put it on the opposite side. So if you're gonna put these in, flat side needs to be on the outside. So after you smack yourself with a hammer a few times and you get these guys in, the pins, the plate, and then your cotter pins on both sides, nothing is gonna go anywhere. So I am completely done. The only thing I have left to do is clean the outside and of course, put the wheel on. All right, just slap the wheel on there. Haven't put the lugs on, but damn, that looks good. I know it's trying to be a sleeper and everything, but uh, bright red doesn't exactly help but it's still cool all right so after a quick bleed of the brakes i've got everything on now and it looks fantastic of course once i do my burn in on my pads and my rotors all that black is going to turn nice and metallic so it looks really good right now with that red kind of stands out even though i'd rather have them in black so everything would come together nice but Next up, we have the rears, which are a little bit, in my opinion, harder because you have to put the adapters on there and you also have the pads on the inside, which I'm not sure if I need to change or not. 